careful of what you say Be sincere when you pray Today could be your last day Bear each other no malice Greed and faith can coexist In the same heart Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Welcome dear viewers to a live episode of Gems of the Heart And I'm your host for the evening Junaid Da Dear viewers, I'd like to begin by thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala For giving us the opportunity to come together and to serve his deen Furthermore, I'd like to thank all of the viewers for their continual support for joining us on air, joining us through live streaming, joining us on Facebook and engaging with us. We really appreciate your feedback, your engagement. It really makes the program much more interactive and much more exciting as well. Dear viewers, last week we spoke about the issue of Tawheed and the connection of Tawheed with our hearts. In particular, we looked at Tawheed uh, of Ibadah, that's the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in acts of worship, and how that really affects our hearts and how it purifies our hearts. Today, inshallah ta'ala, we're going to continue on the same subject, but part two, we're going to be looking at the different types of worship. We're going to be looking at those aspects of physical aspects that we could do uh, that will affect our Tawheed and possibly bring about the rise of shirk um, in our worship and how shirk plays a part, a negative part uh, in uh, the purification of our hearts. Dear viewers, I'd like to also make mention our question from last week, it still stands. And the question was, mention a verse from the Quran which mentions both Tawheed and Shirk in the same verse. We have two people who have answered it on Facebook and we will make mention of those in due course. But we're opening the lines and we want all of you to join us. Our numbers are running across the screens. You can use any of those two. So please do call us and give us your answer to the questions or your comments. And if you can't get to a phone, you can always join us uh, on Facebook. And also we'd like to make a mention of the questions that were put out on the course for last week. We've had a few people answer those um, and we will make mention of their names uh, and their scores as well, hopefully in due course. Let's begin by introducing our Sheikh and then let's get into our questions. If I can begin by introducing Sheikh Ibrahim Zidane, I'd like to welcome you Sheikh to our program again. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa barakatuh. Sheikh, uh, last week we started our discussion of uh, Tawheed Uluhiyah or Ibadah as it's known. Mm -hmm. uh, we got quite far into that, but uh, just very briefly as a recap, Sheikh, what is the importance once again of Tawheed and our hearts? Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa wa rasulullah wa ba'd. The Tawheed is the purpose of our life, the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in worship. That's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent the messengers with. That's why the books were revealed for people to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. And the only way that a person would enter the Jannah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to be saved from the hellfire is to come into the day of judgment with a pure and a sound heart. And the sound heart and the pure heart, the essential part of it is that it has to be on the matter of Tawheed. Without Tawheed, with Shirk, the contamination of the heart is enough for the person to be in the hellfire forever. So looking at the heart from the perspective of Tawheed and Shirk is so essential because this is the difference between kufr and iman and the way that we complete our iman purifies our hearts more and more so without the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone in the perfect sense then the hearts will be contaminated and is not sufficient for it to enter the jannah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala okay excellent uh, shaykh also as we're talking about ibadah um, could I ask you to just give us a definition, or not a definition, but uh, the criteria, like how can you differentiate between an act which is an act of worship and an act which we do on a daily basis? No. We had mentioned before the definition of ibadah and the most comprehensive definition of uh, the ulama, like the one by Shaykh Al-Sain Taymiyyah, rahimahullah, that the ibadah is ismun jami'un likulli ma yuhibbu Allah arda, a comprehensive name uh, to all what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves and pleased with, whether it's an outside appearance of an action or inward, whether it's done uh, you know, with the heart or the tongue or the physical actions, all of this, as long as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with and he loves this act. The point here, how would we know that an act is an act of ibadah, act of worship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or just a worldly affairs of people? The way to know that is basically from the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet okay. Any order in the Quran that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered the believers to do or human beings to do, that means this is an act of worship. So if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered the believers, for example, وَعَلَى اللَّهِ فَتَوَكَّلُوا إِن كُنْتُمْ مُؤْمِنُ On Allah, rely on Him, make tawakkul, rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you are believers, that means one of the acts of worship is a tawakkul, to rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
to rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is not a physical action. It's a deed done by the heart. Okay. So this is a ibadah of the heart. And the same thing when it comes to وَقُولُ لِلنَّاسِ حُسْنَةِ Say to people what is good. This is something to be done by the tongue. So this is an act of worship. أَقِيمُ الصَّلَةِ Establish the salah. This is an order from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is an act of worship done physically with our physical parts and the heart and the tongue also and so on. Okay. So whatever in the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered us to do something, then the slave of Allah is alert. This is something that this is the purpose of our life. This is the worship. Uh, worldly things or things that per a person would do in his norm, it can be ibadah. If a person would do it according to the way of the Prophet وسلم, he would seek rewards from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would reward him uh, because this is basically the way of the Prophet وسلم, that Allah made him the example to all mankind and especially for the believers. Uh, Sheikh, I just want to give an example so we, we can actually illustrate what we're discussing. Um, so, for example, if I uh, go to the bathroom, um, and I don't have any intention, I just go to the bathroom, just a, a normal act. But at the same time, if I go to the bathroom, but my intention is to go then to purify myself, to make wudu, and uh, to do an act of worship, what differentiates those two, and what's the difference in reward? Right, this is a beautiful example because everybody goes to the bathroom. But there's a big difference between the believers and the disbelievers or those who are forgetful. Okay. So for the believers, they go to the bathroom, they, need, they have the knowledge of how to go to the bathroom. This is part of our religion. And uh, as one of the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu he said that the Prophet Sallallahu taught us even how to relieve ourselves. So this is part of our deen. So know how to, the etiquettes of relieving oneself in the bathroom, this is, makes it a rewardable act. And then uh, for a believer when they go to the bathroom, they know how to clean themselves, which is part of the religion. Uh, they would purify themselves after that, they would make wudu. And for a person to be able to make the salah, we have to be clean from any physical impurities and we have to be in the state of wudu, the state of uh, purification. So both have to be there. So that's why when a person goes to the bathroom, he cleans himself physically and makes wudu. This is by itself, you know, for the purpose of the salah or reading Quran or the purpose of just keeping our state of purification. It's a rewardable act. Okay. And that's why it's a waste of life when a person would just live his life without focused and seeking rewards from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, learning the way the Prophet sallallahu We have to eat anyway. We have to go to the bathroom anyway. We work, we go out, we go into our homes. We have relationships. So why learn it in the most perfect way? The way of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa And it beautifies, it gives barakah to it and great rewards from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, excellent, Sheikh. Uh, dear viewers, on that note, we, have open, we are opening up the phone line, so please do call us. Our numbers are running across your screens there. You've got two numbers. If you're calling outside of Egypt, then please don't forget to use the code, which is 002. Join us live in the studio. You can answer the question, which verse, which ayah contains both Tawheed and Shirk at the same verse. Or you can give us any other comment or any other question that you have on the topic or even off topic. So do join us uh, live in the studio. Uh, Sheikh, coming back to the example we gave about the bathroom or daily acts, uh, what uh, role does your intention play when you do something? So if we're both walking down the road, if you have one intention and I have a different intention, are the rewards possibly different? No. As you also mentioned before that there are two conditions for any deed to be accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that is the sincere intention and to follow the way of the Prophet sallallahu So the intentions when it comes to the acceptance of the deeds, this is essential. And also the intention makes the matter of uh, ibadah an act of ibadah. So when a person is going from one place to the other, where is he going? And what's the purpose of him going to that place? Whether a person is going for a sin, or going to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or do some necessity of one's life, that is, that's a big difference. For example, if a person is going to steal, or to going to a place to commit a sin, he's already walking, and he made the decision, and he's going forward. What if he get arrested? Okay. Or, you know, there's no electricity, or whatever there is. He did not commit that sin. He still have to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? Because of his intentions. Right. He already made the decision to commit sin and to disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And on the other hand, if a person is going to the masjid, and the intention that he's walking in the street, everybody's walking, nobody knows who's going where, he's going to the masjid to do a good deed, to help a, a needy person, to visit relatives, whatever good deeds, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered us to do. And he was not able to do that. He died on the way. So you know, he got injured. Things happen. Whatever there is, the reward is given in full. Once a person set himself out for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and there are many hadith of the Prophet 
that talks about this. So again, it gives a beautiful meaning to the life of the believers. That nothing that we do without intentions. Imam Ahmad, rahimahullah, he used to advise his son. And this is one of the ways to uh, bring our children. He would always tell him not to do so many physical acts. But he would say to him, always intend to do what is good. Make sure that your intention is always good to do what is good. If the child is raised this way, then the actions comes and follows. If a person have the knowledge of how to follow the way the Prophet Okay, excellent. Uh, Sheikh, let's move uh, a little bit further now into our discussion and, and look at ibadah from a different perspective. There are different types, uh, as you made mention, some of those mentioned in the Quran. Uh, but from amongst those, uh, starting with dua, hmm. the prayer, how is that an act of worship and what's the evidence for that? Right. When we say dua, we always think of supplication or asking Allah okay. subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is only one type of dua and one type of ibadah. We need to really uh, fix some of these deficiencies in our knowledge. A dua or supplication or prayer is the whole entire religion of Islam. Okay. And that's why the ulama, they talk about two types of dua. There is the dua of al-mas'ala, the dua of asking. Okay. And this is the supplication. This is the well-known with the certain etiquettes to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whether it's in sujood in the salah or whether a person raises his hand and make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the, in the best times and so on. This is one type of uh, the, the dua. And the second type is dua ul-ibadah. Right. The dua of ibadah itself, the dua of worship. The worship of Allah, salah is dua. When a person makes dua and supplication, this is dua. When a person makes dhikr, remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is dua. Any act of worship, it's part of the dua because this is the praise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the evidence of that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned both dua and ibadah in the same context, in many verses. One of which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَقَالَ رَبُّكُمْ دُعُونِي أَسْتَجِبْ لَكُمْ Right. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ud'uni. This is an act of worship. We know that dua is an act of worship because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Supplicate to me. Make dua to me. I would respond to your dua. So uh, if a person thinks that this is just for asking, immediately after that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Those who arrogantly stay away from my, not dua, from my ibadah, okay. from my worship. So that means the dua is worship. And that's what the Prophet ﷺ said, الدُّعَاءُ هُوَ الْعِبَادِ The dua is the ibad. So why this is significant, why this is important? Because some people, they differentiate between the dua supplication. They say this has to be only to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But other acts of worship, it can be to other than Allah. Like sacrificing, like slaughtering, like uh, you know whatever dua, like maybe even dua sometimes. This is deviation, of course, from the truth. And it's all things that has to be done only for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, seeking the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, uh, Shaykh, you mentioned two types of dua. You said the mas'ala, mm -hmm. which is asking, and uh, ibadah, which is all the forms of worship that we have. Right. Now, are both of them to be purely done for the sake of Allah, or can we also ask other than Allah? No. Asking other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, if I ask you, to give me a pen, for example. Uh, this is permissible. Why? Because I'm asking you about something that you're capable of doing, okay. from a human being to a human being. But asking as an act of worship, of making dua to other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in things that only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can provide. Forgiveness, the jannah, the hellfire, the matters of the future, whatever there is, as an act of worship, whoever asks and invoke other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had committed the worst crime ever committed on the face of earth, which is shirk associating partners with Allah. So whether a person is asking a pious uh, person in his grave or someone that is alive or anything of that nature, even asking the Prophet Sallallahu himself, and he's the best man ever walked on the face of earth, but he's a messenger of Allah to be followed, والسلام, and the only one to be followed, not the, the one to be worshipped. We have to make that separation clear. The Rabb, the creator of the heavens and the earth, to him, you know, for people to worship him alone, and he has the perfect names and attributes. For other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the creation of Allah, there is no such a thing as rububiyah for them. There is no lordship for them. Okay. There is no worship for them. They are to be followed of the righteous and so on. So mixing this, this is something that we see even in the Muslim world today. And how when people go away from the light and from the source of the truth, the wahi from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, things can be very serious and very devastating to one's iman. Okay. So everything has to be only for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the most important thing, of course, the dua and any act of worship.
Okay, excellent. Uh, uh, Sheikh, let's move over to the uh, another form of, of worship, uh, which is described as muhabba, which is which is love, um, and also other aspects of khauf and raja, which is fear and hope. Can, how do those fit into worship? Right. These are deeds done by the heart, and these are things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Quran, that the believers, they love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and therefore this is an act of worship. The love mentioned here is not the love that a person would have to his mother or to his wife. This is, uh, you know, natural love, uh, you know, human beings to human beings. What is meant by this love is muhabbatu ta'zim, okay. the love of exaltation, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only one to be loved in that way, because he's the only one to be worshipped. He's the one that created love itself. So that's why it's the perfect love from the believers to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they would worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with this perfect love. Worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with perfect love because we love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and with submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So uh, when the heart is full of this, we would make our salah accordingly. We would give our zakah. We would sacrifice even our life and our wealth for the sake of Allah because we love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's the one that ordered us and we're honored to fulfill the orders of Allah and the hope and the fear fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says فَلَا تَخَفُوهُمْ وَخَفُونِ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ مُؤْمِنِ do not fear them do not fear the disbelievers and fear me if you are believers right so why fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a good thing is an act of worship because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered us and if a person doesn't fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone he would fear other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the fear of Allah is a beautiful thing the fear of other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the misery of this life and hereafter. Hoping for the rewards. We hope for uh, the rewards from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. Because he's the owner of the rewards. Human beings do not own anything. If you go to the most pious, the most righteous person, he cannot benefit you by any way or form. He cannot push away, away harm in, in any way or form. Only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So an act of worship, we can, a person can make his salah, seeking rewards from a person watching him. Right. By showing off. You're seeking rewards from him to praise you. Also, that makes the ibadah invalid. So the person has to make his salah, his dhikr, his charity, not to seek reward or hoping for a praise. Or sometimes even the ulama, they say, don't even expect or wait for the dua of the poor person when you give him charity. Right. Don't even ask for that. You know, when you give charity, don't ask for anything. Seek rewards only from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the hope and the fear and the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All of this in the heart is an amazing thing. The heart can have more than one thing at the same time, different than the physical body. So in our hearts, when we're making ibadah, at the same time, we have the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the fear of Allah, the hope for the rewards from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, relying on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, being pleased with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All of this at the same time, when we're doing one physical act. Multifunctioning heart. Right. Heart is amazing. Nobody can even comprehend the essence of how this heart uh, works by the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, excellent. Uh, Sheikh, some of the scholars also mentioned another form of worship, which is known as at tawakkul. Um, can I ask you to explain to us what this concept is, and also how is it an act of worship? Yeah. And here we're just mentioning some of the examples of the act of worship, and that's why it's a duty for us to learn it. At tawakkul means to rely, right? And to rely means that you rely on the creator of the heavens and the earth. And this is an act done by the heart. The ulama, when they define at tawakkul, they say in Arabic, صدق اعتماد القلب على الله مع الأخذ الأسباب which means that the truthfully, the person is, the heart is relying <coughs> on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala truthfully while taking the means. So it constitutes the tawakkul or relying on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which is an act of worship. So what it means is, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered us to pray, then we rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because we cannot do anything except by the power of Allah. Right. And then physically we would go to the salah. If a person is seeking provisions, going to work, to seek uh, wealth and provisions and so on, rely with your heart on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He is the provider. No one else is the provider. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. And therefore, you would not commit sins to earn money and wealth and so on. You'll be so much content and relaxed that sins does not bring for me wealth. Right. Only the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It would bring wealth, yes, but it's haram, it's evil. So a person would rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and not to stay back or to stay home, but to take the means to go out and to work and to seek the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will provide. So both they go together, the physical actions of taking the means and the heart is content. And the Prophet ﷺ gave a beautiful example. If a person uh, wants to know a, a physical example to make it easy for us, he said, لَوْ أَنَّكُمْ تَتَوَكَّلُونَ عَلَى اللَّهِ حَقَّ تَوَكُّلِهِ لَرَزَقَكُمْ كَمَا يَرْزُقُ الطَّيْبِ 
which means that if you have the tawakkul and the reliance on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the true way, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would provide for you the same way He provides for the birds. Goes out in the morning empty stomach, comes back full stomach at night. The birds, they don't panic. But at the same time, when you see them, they're going from one tree to the other, they don't stop. Right. They're moving physically, but the hearts are content. They know that the provisions from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will come to them. So this is the same way for the believers. The birds, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not create the heavens and the earth for them, and He still provides for them. So how about the human being that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala honored and created everything for him? You know, he would not provide for him if he's obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so Shaykh, the, the correct understanding of tawakkul, uh, just to make it very clear, uh, many times people may think that just means just, just giving up and hoping for everything to come to them because they have strong tawakkul. Mm -hmm. But like you made mention of the bird, the bird actually does work. It goes out and struggles and then receives its provisions. Right. So what's the correct understanding of tawakkul? That's the, this, the thing that we said about the definition of tawakkul. The definition of tawakkul is the heart fully... 100% relying on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone, the heart. But when it comes to physical actions, taking the means, the permissible means to achieve what, you, what you're seeking. And this is, this both of these things are basically the definition of tawakkul. Whoever says it's relying on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone without taking the means, this person is insane. Okay. This is what ulama they call him, he's majnoon, he's insane. He, you know, he's not responsible for his actions if he says this. And if a person take the means without relying with the heart on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and think believing that the means are the thing you know and this is what brings the provisions and so on this is basically deficiency in the tawheed of the person he needs to review what it means to believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that's what we see also in many of our lives today when Muslims go take the means mashallah and they go to work and they go to school and everything but disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala thinking that this uh, riba loan will bring provisions or this haram job will bring provisions and relying on these means so much thinking that if I don't do this I would you know, starve to death this is a problem, a deficiency in one's tawheed okay. related to the tawheed is not just an act of sin but there's a disease in the heart that person is re not relying on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala deficiency, weakness in one's tawheed Okay, excellent. Uh, Shaykh, another form of worship which is mentioned uh, by the scholars is also the concept of al-khashiyah um, uh, it's a bit of a difficult word to translate. Uh, what would it What would it equal to? Al khashya usually translate as the fear of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Okay. But again, uh, sometimes we have problems with it when it comes to translation because people have in their own culture the impact of the words. That's Nobody right. likes to fear. Fear is the is a negative thing, right? So why would you fear, right? Fear is a beautiful thing if it's the fear of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Could we say to be conscious? To be conscious, but it's fear. It's you, you, you fear the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He's the most just. Right. And this fear is an act of worship because we are, as human beings, we created, we have something called fear in us. And if a person doesn't fear the creator of the heavens and earth, he would fear his future. Uh, he would fear other human beings. So fear is something that is inevitable. But either to, to use it in the right way, to do it the right way, and that is to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone, and the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a beautiful thing. Makes the person content, makes the person happy, focused on uh, seeking the rewards from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone because He subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most just. And when He punishes, His punishment is severe. And His reward is nobody can ever imagine and comprehend the rewards from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's both, these both are acts of worship. You know, if a person says, I don't fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is such an evil thing in one's heart. That means a person he fears other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's not like he doesn't fear anything. Okay. You know, he fears other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the beautiful way is to fear the creator, the heavens and the earth. And the fear, as the they say, is like a whip on the heart. Okay. You know, it's not meant for itself. It's meant for the person to be steadfast. Without fear, people won't go to work. If they don't fear poverty, if they don't fear whatever, people won't do anything on the face of earth. That's right. So they don't function only with hope. They function with hope and fear and love. And that's why all of these senses and feelings and all of this as a human in the human body Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants all of this to be for his sake subhanahu wa ta'ala so the human being the believer becomes everything in him to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say oh Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam my salah my sacrifice my life and my death all for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he has no partners so this is the life of a Muslim. And Sheikh, this is actually uh, very apparent when we think about our lives, when at times we do actions because we know the reward of that action in Jannah. 
-hmm. So we want to do it because we want either a house or, or, mm -hmm. or a tree in general, so we will do it. And other actions, we will not do them uh, because we're afraid of what will happen to us in the hellfire, the food you'll be given or the clothing you'll be given. And it works both ways, the love as well as the fear. Right, and that's how human beings, they live their life. This is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us. And that's why when the believers, they worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with these different acts of worship, they're fulfilling the perfect sense of ibadah, of worship, with the names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that He is the most just, He is the, the most the almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala, so they would fear the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and they hope for the mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. Okay, excellent. Uh, Shaykh, the next uh, act of worship here on the list uh, in Arabic, they would, you, the, the word is uh, al-inaba. Uh, which would, could mean fleeing to or turning to or coming towards something. Mm. Um, how is that an act of worship? al inaba literally means to return to something. Okay. So as if a person, when he's away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he renegated away, right? And there's no goodness, there's no peace, unless a person returned back to his creator. We, he is the one that created us. We all came from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He created us. And we all shall return to him subhanahu wa ta'ala after we depart from this life. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants the hearts in this life to be in that state of return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the return, what is meant by the return is, is to return with repentance. Right. And that's okay. what tawbah even means. But al-inaba is more of the meaning of tawbah, more of the repentance. Repentance is to repent from the sin, to go, to go back to the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But al-inaba is to stay there, to make the tawbah consistent, to be always in the state of tawbah. To be always in state of inaba, that makes the person always repenting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Would not make the person persistently committing a sin. So how can we reach this level in which the heart is always in state of return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? By constantly making sure that we're not in the state of sin. If a person falls into the sin, he immediately returns to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with tawbah. And to guard our tawbah and repentance to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that we're always in that state of inaba. Okay, excellent. Some, some very interesting acts of worship here. Mm -hmm. A lot of them, subhanAllah, Shaykh, they to do with the heart, actions right. uh, pertaining to the heart. But we will come to all of them, hopefully. Uh, on this point, we will take a short break. And then when we come back, we'll continue these acts of worship. Mm -hmm. Dear viewers, we're going to take a very short break here. And then when we come back, we will look at the other types of worship. And then hopefully, we'll also have a look at the opposite. What are those things that actually destroy the heart or cause corruption inside of one's tawheed. Let me remind you again of the question of the week, which is from last week, which is still open, and that was make mention of an ayah which contains tawheed and shirk in the same verse. We're going to leave this question open and up until the end of the program, and then we will make mention of those that have answered it correctly, and if somebody calls in also, we would like to hear what you have to say as well. Let's take a short break, and we will see you in just a few moments. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back, dear viewers, after a very short break here. Joining us live on Gems of the Heart, where we are talking about Tawheed and Tawheed al Ibadah, to be quite specific. Now, dear viewers, before the break, we had a look at a number of different actions or things to do with the heart uh, that are constituting uh, Tawheed. Now, let's go and continue with our discussion on these different aspects. But before we do, I also like to remind you of our question from last week. So do call us and do try to answer the question via Facebook or through the phone and join us, joining us live in the studio. The question is as follows. Please make mention of a verse which has Tawheed and Shirk in the same verse. So please do call us and join us uh, on our program. Sheikh, let's go back uh, to uh, the actions or different types of ibadah. And uh, we finished with uh, al inaba The next one would be al istiana hmm. uh, How would you translate that and what exactly is that? al istiana is something that we hear in Surah Al-Fatiha, Yaka na'bud wa yaka nasta'in. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only one that we worship and he's the only one that we seek help from. So al istiana is to seek help. This is an act of worship by seeking help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to establish the ibadah, to establish the worship of Allah and to seek help from Allah in all of our affairs. But the most virtuous one is to seek help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to establish the act of worship. So this is something done by the heart when you feel that you're helpless. You have no power whatsoever. You have no way to achieve the purpose of your life unless Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help you. Okay. This feel in the heart 
it's called to be in need of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then the person would seek help from Allah. That's why the Prophet وسلم, when he said to Mu'adh radiallahu anhu, Ya Mu'adh, wallahi inni uhibbuk, oh by Allah, I love you. And then he gave him this treasure, this gift. He said, do not leave after each salah to say, Allahumma a'inni ala dhikrika wa shukrika wa husni ibadatik. Allahumma a'inni, this is the isti'ana. Wallah, help me to uh, make your ibadah and dhikr and to be grateful to you, O oh Allah. So without the help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we cannot really achieve it. Okay. And that's why it's ibadah and isti'ana always together. Worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone and seek help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Some people, they worship Allah, but they don't seek help from Allah. Right. Some people, they seek help from Allah, but they don't worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And some people, they don't do both. And some people, of course, this is the perfect way, is to both worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to seek help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to establish the worship and in all of our affairs in our life. That's only to be done to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We don't seek help from no one but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But again, if, I, if you help me to give me a pen or things that in the capacity of the human being, it's even better for the Muslim to avoid that as much as he can. But if it's in the capacity of the human being, there's no harm. But the things that when it comes to establish of the worship and uh, the matters of unseen to us and so on, this is an act of worship to be done only to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right, okay, very interesting. Uh, Sheikh, the next one on our list here uh, is uh, al-isti'adha. Hmm. Uh, how, how does that uh, work? Al-isti'adha is to say, A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan rajim To seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is what al-isti'adha, you're asking for refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from something. We know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said about ever, our everlasting enemy, the shaitan. He's our enemy. So we seek help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala seeking refuge. Refuge is more of, uh, again, dire need of help. Okay. That without this refuge, when a person is a refuge, that means he has no other way to go to. So this is something to be done only to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We don't make istaada to anyone but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because this is an act of worship. So uh, when a person seeks re refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the shaitan, from the enemies of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then that person is fulfilling the tawheed, the oneness of worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with regards to this act of worship. Okay. We do it every time we recite the Quran and we make it in our athkar, athkar before we go to sleep and so on. Okay, excellent, Sheikh. Uh, those were a list of actions of ibadah, worship that were coming from the heart. Mm. Uh, there's another one which is a physical act and that is the action of dhabh, which is slaughtering. Mm. Uh, it's a physical act, so how is that purely for Allah and how does that affect the heart? Right. Slaughtering the animals that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala permit for us to slaughter, to eat, like the cattle for example, the, uh, you know, uh, whether it's uh, cows or sheep or goats or, or even camels, these are permissible for us to eat, but it has to be done in a certain way. These okay. are lives that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created and nobody has the right to take this life except by the permission of Allah. So by the permission of Allah is by doing it in the right way, to say Bismillah, in the name of Allah and to slaughter it in the right way. So there's a physical aspect of it that you do it in the right way. And at the same time, you mention the name of Allah. Uh, to slaughter as an act of worship means it's supposed to be done only to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right. What does that mean? People used to, and they still, some of them, they would slaughter to other than Allah, to their gods, to their idols. Uh, sometimes even, which is a very common thing among many of the Muslims, which is an act of minor shirk sometimes, when people would slaughter to honor someone right? That because of some important person coming so they would slaughter. It's not about the food or the meat that they're serving, it's the act of slaughtering itself. Okay. So the person would feel that he's respected when blood is shed of the animals, you know, in some villages and things like that, people do that. This is not permissible whatsoever. Uh, and so sure, does that come back to the point where you mentioned it's about ta'zim, about making right. Allah magnificent and right. giving him what he deserves right. and you're giving this to another human being. To another human being. And this is a very common you know, uh, act that people do sometimes in which a person would say, but I want to feed these people. I want to be generous. Yes, slaughter the animals and cook the food with the intention of the meat. It's not about the act of slaughter. Act of slaughtering by itself is an act of worship to be done only to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Some people, they do that to the jinn, uh, out of the fear of these jinn. Or a person, for example, purchased a new home or a new car, and they would slaughter. Even if they slaughter to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but this has a root to it, that people would do that to drive the jinn away and so on. This is all acts of shirk. Okay. Hearts are being attached to other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So therefore, slaughtering is only for the sake of Allah, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered, like we do in Eid and in any other occasion, only to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not for the sake of anyone, or not to cause or for honoring anyone, 
It's only to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, excellent. Uh, Sheikh, the next uh, act of worship here uh, is the act of another, the act of a qasm of swearing. Mm. When we many times we get angry or we want to prove our point, we will start using the names of Allah or using other things to swear. What is that? Al Halif or swearing, you know, this is also a sign that a person is making ta'zim. Uh, magnifying or exalting whoever he is swearing by. So uh, that's why it's only permissible for a person to do that by using the names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. So whoever swears by other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is shirk by the statement of the Prophet sallallahu <laughs> Whoever swears by other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he had committed an act of shirk or act of disbelief. Why? Because of the exaltation in the heart of who you are swearing with. Okay. So that's why we say by Allah. Uh, and by or, or one of the attributes of Allah, by the honor, by the izzah of Allah, and so on, but not by any other human beings, whether it's the father or the prophet or anything like this. And that's different than another. And another is the vow. Right. When a person would vow that he, if that happens, I would do this. You know, that means he has to fulfill this, and this is an act of worship. And vows or another is not to be done to other than Allah. Some people they go to the graves of the righteous ones, and they would say, if I pass my exam, I would slaughter this for you. Or I would give this, this is an act of clear major shirk. Okay. Take the person outside the fold of Islam. Because the nether is an act of worship. And it's only to be done to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the nether is to make an act of worship, giving charity or making salah. It's not something uh, good for the person to do. Some even forbade it. Some either you know, said that it's disliked. Because you made what is permissible becomes mandatory on you. Okay. But if it happened, it has to be only to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right, okay, very interesting. Um, also, on that note, Sheikh, you mentioned the point of uh, swearing. Um, how important is it that uh, I I we don't swear so often? Mm -hmm. Many times, I think this is a habit that uh, we need to speak about. Many times, or certain cultures, they will use uh, the words wallahi or billahi or tallahi at every sentence. Right. And uh, what is your opinion on that? Right. Uh, when people swear, either they swear about something in the past or something they will do in the future. Things in the past, this is a very dangerous one. If a person swears about something that happened in the past and he's lying, this is what is called al yamin al-ghamus. This is the swearing that dips the person in the hellfire. It's a major, major sin if a person lie and swears about something that happened in the past. But if a person swears that he would do something in the future, right? A person should not do that. And if people do not believe you, then that's too bad. Unless a person is in front of the judge or the court, you know, and he has to swear, or if you know it's needed. You know, for people to believe him in a certain situation, disputes or something like this, then there's no harm as long as the person is sincere and truthful and he's able to do what he's swearing about. But to just to keep it in one's tongue like this, you know, this is not permissible uh, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, he, he forbade us. He said, aymanakum. Protect your ayman, your, your, your swearing, your oath. Do not just say it, you know, for, for no reason like this. So, and this is a very detailed subject. And there is kafara, there's expiation of not be able to fulfilling uh, the oath because it's using the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that means it becomes an act of worship. So we should not abuse this so much in our affairs and our talk. And one of the signs of hypocrisy is that a person swears all the time. Okay. You know, that means he's not honest, he's not truthful. He, that's why he needs something with it, you know, uh, to support his words and so on. Okay, excellent, uh, Sheikh. That is just a brief list of things I think we can make mention of when it comes to ibadah. Uh, but uh, my next question comes about um, the different parts of your body that can be used to make ibadah. I mean, the, we've talked about it now, uh, but could you give us more details about uh, the heart and the, and, the, and, and the organs and the tongue and so on and so forth? To make it easy, there is no part of our body unless we're supposed to do act of worship for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay. So our job now is to get to know what is the worship of our hands and our eyes and our ears and mouth and everything. There's things to be done and things not to be done. And that's where the knowledge comes in place. And the king of all of this, the source of all of this is the heart. This is where the intentions comes and the love of Allah and the fear and the hope and so on that beautifies and makes the actions done physically or speech to be right or wrong, to be accepted or not. So to pay attention to what we do with our hearts and the different acts of worship and the tawheed and the iman and the faith and so on. And to make sure that physically and our speech according to the way of the Prophet Okay. So, uh, and even to that focus, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us our hands for a reason. Even when you make salah and you, you make your, your hand like this, this is an act of worship, act of obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right. And what do we extend our hands for? 
when do we withhold our hands? Okay. You know, the, the, when it comes to, for example, Al Yadul Ulya, Khairu Minadi Sufla. Prophet said the upper hand is better than the lower hand. And the upper hand is the hand that gives, and the lower hand is the hand that takes. So it teaches the Muslim to have uh, honor and to have dignity and not to uh, humiliate oneself unless a person is in dire need and so on. So all of this is, we get to know that from the ayat and the hadith of the Prophet What to say and what not to say. And the diseases and the, and the sins done by the tongue with backbiting and slandering and lying and so on. And the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and enjoying good and forbidding evil. And all of this we will be asked about in the Day of Judgment. Okay. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whatever He gave us in our health and wealth and so on, we will be questioned about this in the Day of Judgment. How did we use it? according to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us, according to the way the Prophet That's why programs like this and details in which people need to learn, we need to learn the deen of Islam okay. and the ayat of the Quran and the hadith of the Prophet to perfect our hearts and our tongues and our actions because they affect one another in an interchangeably way. Okay, excellent. Uh, uh, on that note, Sheikh, I just want to give a gentle reminder to our viewers that we will be uh, answering the question that was given last week in just a few moments. So we have we will give you the last option, the last opportunity to answer the question. So do pick up the phones, do join us live in the studio, inshallah ta'ala, and we will shortly be coming over to the answers on our Facebook page as well. Uh, Sheikh, I have one other interesting aspect uh, about Tawheed, in particular Tawheed uh, Ibadah, that we've talked about different aspects, talked about the heart, talked about the organs, and so on and so forth. But many times we find in some of the books, the scholars, they talk about Himayat uh, Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the defense. Uh, of the honor of the Prophet Muhammad How is that connected with Tawheed, especially Tawheed al-Ibadah? Now, the Prophet وسلم, he is the final messenger of Allah. He's the most beloved to us uh, after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when it comes to the human beings. He's the most beloved to the believers because without the Prophet وسلم, we would have been in total darkness. We would not know how to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what is right and what is wrong. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made, made him the example alayhi salatu wasalam. And the love of the Prophet in our heart is an act of worship. We worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by loving the Prophet وسلم, and that's the sign of al-Iman when the person would love the Prophet وسلم, and therefore we would follow his way. You know, if, if a person knows about someone that is generous, for example, people would love that person, you know, because of one quality that he has. You know, imagine someone that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala perfected all of his qualities whatsoever. There's no human being ever created as perfect as the Prophet Sallallahu So that's why he's the most to be loved among all the human beings, even our own selves. Because without the Prophet Sallallahu we would curse ourselves in the Day of Judgment as a result of falling into shirk and kufr and so on. So this is an act of worship, to, to love him for the sake of Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala. It's part of the love of Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala because Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala sent him as the final messenger of Allah, in the same way we love the messengers of Allah. And this love is not just a feeling in the heart, but that what makes us follow him, alayhi salatu and uh, uh, to want to be with him in the Day of Judgment, and to enter the Jannah with him, and to be in his company in the Day of Judgment, and to drink from his hawd, uh, where he gives drinks to the believers and so on. All of this is something that occupies our life. You know, is this act of sin, would it take me away from uh, being away from the Prophet ﷺ in the Day of Judgment? The Prophet ﷺ, he said, أَقْرَبُكُمْ مِنِّي مَجْلِسًا يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَ أَحْسِنُكُمْ أَخْلَقًا the closest among you to me in your majlis, in your gathering and sitting, okay. to me in the Day of Judgment, are the most among you those who have good manners. Very nice. So that it's, all, it's related. SubhanAllah. So if we sincerely love the Prophet ﷺ, we want to be close to him, where our manners to, uh, you know, it comes to this. Are we having good manners with our relatives and our families and the strangers and everybody with this conscious? Not just that we want to have good manners because it's a good thing. No, we do this because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants that from us. And with the hearts being attached, I want to be with the Prophet I want to be close to him. Uh, not innovating in the deen, not inventing things in the religion, because we fear that this can take us away from the Prophet okay. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned that, and as the Prophet said that in the hadith, so staying away from inventing things in the religion, with being conscious 
that that can take me away from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I think, Sheikh, uh, we will have to do a program specifically about the love of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and how that connects with the heart. Uh, but before we continue, Sheikh, I would like to read out some of the answers that we have from our question from last week. Uh, mashallah, we have two responses uh, coming from our question, what verse in the Quran mentions Tawheed and Shirk at the same time? Our first answer, Sheikh, I'll read out the answer and you can tell us if it's, if it's correct or incorrect. Our first uh, response comes from Sister Mary Oli. And she responds with the verse, Ya Budunani Wala Yushrikuna Bi Shayah. Does that contain both Tawheed and Shirk? MashaAllah. Yes, that's perfect. Mashallah. Okay, well done, Sister that's Mary. That's a verse. correct answer, Sheikh. He's giving his thumbs up. And uh, we have Sister uh, Amina Muhammad Abdullahi. And she makes mention of verse and she writes the English. And verily, we have sent among every ummah, community, and nation a messenger proclaiming, Worship Allah alone and avoid or keep away from all false deities. Yeah. Uh, so, Sheikh, is that containing both as well? Perfect, yes. Mashallah. Okay, well done. So, well done, Sister Mary, and well done, Sister Amina. Both of your questions are correct. Two different verses, but yet they contain the same answer. So, well done, Mashallah. Uh, congratulations on that. Keep working hard and keep working through these questions as well. On that note, I'd also like to make mention of the course that we were running and the questions were put out last week. And mashallah, there was a sister as well who answered those questions and she scored very highly. Um, and uh, we are told to keep her name anonymous for that's her request. So well done, sister. You know who you are. You worked very hard and you've been working very hard as well from the beginning. Keep up the hard work and keep up uh, with answering those questions. Sheikh, before we give them the question for um, this week, um, I'd like to make mention that next week we're going to be talking about the opposite of Tawheed, that which affects one's Tawheed, and that is Shirk. Right. Just very briefly, so people will have an insight into next week's program. What is Shirk and how does it affect our hearts? If Tawheed is the most important thing in our life and the purpose of our life, what negates that, it's the worst thing ever can happen on the face of earth, and that is to associate partners with Allah. A Shirk comes with partnership. So since the ibadah has to be only to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, any partners any share of this ibadah to be done to other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that negates the purpose of our life which is the tawheed negates la ilaha illallah uh, Muhammadur Rasulullah and a person becomes a disbeliever and a person becomes in the hellfire forever so therefore it's the most important thing for us to know to avoid it and when a person thinks that uh, I, I already away from it without having the knowledge of this person might be immersed in it and he doesn't know it so okay. that's why it's mandatory for us to know it to perfect our Tawheed and to perfect our Ibad. Okay, Sheikh. Also, um, mashallah, since the beginning of our program, in terms of the up until now, we have had sisters answering our questions. We haven't had a brother yet who has been involved. Uh, I think maybe we are being too merciful and too loving. We should show them some fear. What do you think? Inshallah, <laughs> <laughs> if we can. So I'm, I'm not sure how. <laughs> okay. Uh, dear viewers, I think it's time for the question for this week, inshallah ta'ala, and you can answer that uh, via Facebook. Uh, so we'll be waiting for your answers. The question is, as follows what are the two types of dua if you were paying attention right at the very beginning the sheikh made mention of both of those two um, so you're gonna have to watch the repeat or watch it when it comes on YouTube but what are the two types of dua so do join us and answer those questions on our Facebook page that's gems of the heart and we will be responding accordingly and hopefully tonight or tomorrow you'll be seeing the questions coming out of this program as well and we would like to see your participation and your response uh, on that as well and uh, Sheikh before we conclude just very quickly again um, it's always important to remind us about the importance of studying the importance of learning the importance of not just having emotional lectures where we feel good but systematically improving ourselves very briefly encourages on how we should continue with that right uh, knowledge is the most valuable thing and especially at times of fit and times of tribulations that we face today where we think when we see things are changing so rapidly and how can we be steadfast on the deen of islam on the way the prophet this can never be achieved by looking at the environment that we live in or looking at muslims even we have to go back and see what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us and what the Prophet sallallahu his way and to be patient and to hold fast to this uh, till the moment of death. And that can never be attained unless we seek knowledge. So it's mandatory for us to seek the knowledge of the deen of Islam and to elevate ourselves the more we learn, the more we act. And that's the beauty of the ilm which is the most virtuous, the most valuable thing in one's life is to seek the knowledge of Islam to apply it in our life. 
Okay, excellent, Sheikh. On that note, uh, time is up. So I'd like to thank you for coming to the program, mm -hmm. giving us your time and your knowledge and your experiences. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'd like to conclude by saying assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum as alaikum. Thank you very much. Dear viewers, we have come to the end of this week's live program, Gems of the Heart. Fantastic. So much details there. And you can only really appreciate and understand that if you go back and make notes and think about what was said and really understand, and not just understand, but also apply it. Because the heart is that muscle which doesn't just need the information, but needs to be practically implemented. And inshallah ta'ala, that's how we can improve our tawheed. Before I go, I'd like to also give a congratulations again to Sister Mary and Sister Amina, who answered our questions correctly. Dear brothers, hopefully next week I'm looking to see someone's name uh, on Facebook as well. So brothers, represent us. You're, you're letting us down. Until then, uh, until next week's program, uh, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. You're living in a lawful way Be mindful of what you say Be sincere when you pray Today could be your last day in the same heart, heart. Oh, Lord, only you can change your heart. We call upon you to do so.